So the the recipe for creating social media that that really connects with voters is is right there in the name. It's social media, and I would tack on marketing. So the idea is that you're building relationships. It's social. You're sharing your personality. We often use the word authentic as a shortcut here, but it's really about having personal relationships. It's a two-way conversation. The media, you have to give people something in exchange for the time and attention that they're giving to you as a campaign. And then the marketing comes in with the winner of an election is not the person with the most Facebook likes or retweets. It's the person with the most votes. And and you want to have social media always driving towards campaign goals like raising money, getting attention, recruiting volunteers, and, and taking your opponent off of their game. So it all comes back to uh, creating content that's valuable, that reflects your personality consistently and is oriented towards your campaign goals. So regardless of whether a platform is allowing political ads or is deprioritizing things uh, related to politics, the, the rule has to always be that we follow the voters and in a recent survey, we found that 60% of voters log into Facebook every single day. That's more than watch their daily TV local news. And so as long as voters are spending lots of time on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and other social media platforms, campaigns have to go there. So if we're not allowed to do ads, uh, then we need to figure out how we get in front of them organically, which is very, very difficult. But the key is, you know, building groups, recruiting people to amplify your message. But again, going back to creating content that is worth sharing, that's worth consuming, and, and that people will want to spread further. So uh, regardless of the policies, we need to stay engaged uh, and we can't rely on that shortcut anymore. So it means we've got to get creative. Well, so with um, smaller campaigns, you get to have more of those two-way conversations. And so you can really sure. leverage the social aspect of social media, sometimes even better than a, a large statewide or national campaign. And so the key has to become, go to the platforms where your voters are, don't overextend yourself. Um, and so if you can only reliably create content for Facebook, do Facebook. Don't worry about being on every other single platform out there. And again, if you are in a in running for a smaller, more local seat, platforms like Nextdoor could be a really good avenue for um, reaching folks. But the key is creating content that is acceptable to the platform. So the the smaller races really do require that you get more involved and have one-on-one -on -one sharing. Um, and, and you know what people on the ground are, are talking about and you've got to create content and, and interact with people around those issues. Yeah, so I really view Nextdoor as a, as a great place to sort of listen in, uh, eavesdrop on what neighbors are talking about, what's their, what are their concerns, identifying possible allies who are, are, are chiming in and commenting. It's really not an appropriate place for politicians to go in and put, um, you know, posts or, or videos about their stance. But again, it, it opens a, a, a door to have two-way conversations, gives you ideas about the issues that matter to specific communities and who are those people talking about it? And, and, and what are the words that are compelling? Um, and, and can you create content that gets used in those arguments? So again, it's a little bit more hands off, but that's um, how, how we have to do it in these platforms that don't allow political advertising right now. Well, so you always got to be careful because I'm old enough to remember when 2016 was going to be the Meerkat election and Meerkat didn't even make it to 2016. It dropped out before most of the candidates did. Um, and so we have to think about where are we um, going to have sustainable, scalable audiences. And so for me, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter seem to be the networks where most people um, are, are gathering. And so I would prioritize those for campaigns. There's a broader trend within the sorts of content that are being created, not just on those platforms, but other more 
um, uh, newer platforms like Clubhouse and TikTok. And that trend is that the, the role of the creator is becoming more and more important. You can't just create a video and then upload it or write a statement and then post it. Right you've got to be actively involved in creating the content. You can't uh, fake a TikTok video, Clubhouse, you have to be actively there. Same thing with Instagram Live. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that uh, over the coming years where it's going to be harder for candidates to sort of stand behind a, a digital team uh, creating content for them because uh, that's not what voters and social media users are after and it's not what they're, they're getting from most other um, users on the platform. About technology, especially social media, and they may not be comfortable. But the, the breakdown comes in, in people who, who understand that what's happening online is really happening in real life and that there is no separation there. And so the more that candidates can embrace that, uh, the better. The, the, the challenge with social media is like avoid books that like this is a manual. We're going to tell you how to do it, but look instead for resources that help you with, with content. So one of my favorite um, reads is called Hit Makers. Um, sure. And it, it talks about how content um, gets moved and it really, uh, it really busts this idea of viral distribution where all I have to do is create a good piece of content and it's going to, um, move on its own. If you want to create persuasive content, you've got to have distribution built in. Upstream's another really good book about like, how do you change minds with this? Um, but one of the, I think one of the best resources for me is just looking at other creators that aren't necessarily in politics, but in, in other spaces. And, um, the, the thing that works for them is just consistently publishing day in and day out. And so I would say rather than going out and getting a, a, a book, which there are lots of good, um, you know, options out there, find a few creators that you really like. It could be from sports. It could be from writing. It could be from movies, but follow them, see what they're doing and, and try and take away lessons from them.